Well, let's go back real quick, uh, Dan, to uh, this last, last weekend. Errol Spence Jr., you know, has some trouble in the sixth round against Jordanus Ugas, but comes back uh, from it with a real, real, real nasty streak and ends up, uh, you know, uh, breaking the orbital bone and uh, finishing U Ugas in the 10th round. How impressed were you by what you saw from Errol Spence, you know, especially on the heels of a 19-month layoff that included his, uh, uh, the retinal tear that was identified in the surgery that he underwent? I thought it was a superstar performance. I was super impressed. I thought that he looked as good as he's ever looked in the sixth round, notwithstanding when he got uh, hurt. And that, and you know, and I'm not making excuses for Errol Spence, but he even joked about it in his post fight interview. You know, I don't think that would have happened if he doesn't make a, as he said, a rookie mistake and basically just, you know, uh, take his eye off the ball, so to speak, and turned away. You know, the rules are protect yourself at all times. The mouthpiece was on the ground. He looked at the ref and to the mouthpiece, and Ugas did what he was supposed to do when he punched him in the face. Uh, and it caught him, and he went into the ropes, and he, you know, was stunned, obviously. Um, and Ugas, you know, was able to have a, a, a pretty good time right there. Um, so it wasn't like Ugas got to him, and suddenly his, you know, defense was penetrated, and and uh, you know, he was in big trouble. Um, he overcame that, and he came back and and actually beat up Ugas real bad in the seventh round after that incident. Um, I thought, I thought, I thought Spence looked absolutely fantastic. He is a bona fide pound for pound level top champion in the sport. Um, he has been for a long time, and if you didn't know that he had been in a very terrible car accident at the end of 2019, had a long layoff, and then came back, got one win, and had another very long layoff because he suffered a retinal tear and had surgery, you would just, you know, you would never even notice that there was any degradation to his abilities or skills whatsoever. Uh, he clearly worked hard in training to get ready for this fight against a quality opponent, and he went in there and he did the job. Uh, he looked, I thought he looked better against Ugas than he did against Danny Garcia, and that was a fight where, he looked pretty good coming off of the off the car accident, and then, you know, you you weigh that against the the performance against Sean Porter, a very good fight that he had in yeah. his fight prior to the accident, where it was a, a much closer fight, a much tougher fight that he won, but, you know, Garcia, Ugas, Porter, all legit top welterweights, and he ran through all three of them. You know, a little trouble against Porter was a close fight, uh, but no doubt he won. And same with Garcia, and then he put up. Uh, you know, a, a devastating performance against Ugas. He's fighting at the top of his game right now, and and uh, hopefully it means that we'll see the big one as we'll talk about with Terrence Crawford. You know, at the, at the next uh, at the next fight later this year. Absolutely. Just got off the uh, Zoom call with uh, Spence's trainer Derek James, and he said, I, I asked him. I said, What is this about? Is this about the money that uh, Spence missed out on from Pacquiao? Um, you know, or is it does it fe is it a result of just feeling you know that he's as sharp as he can possibly be after doing what he did to Ugas? And he said, no, it's none of it. He said, this is what he said he's going to do all along, that he was scripting his career to arrive at this moment, and now he is ready for this Crawford fight. Um, obviously, Dan, I mean, this is a fight that we've all been waiting for for a reason. This would be a tremendous matchup. Um, there's so many different ways that I could see this fight going. Um, are, you, are you confident? We, you know, we know that there's been, like, some financial things that Spence has said in the uh, past about wanting 70% of the purse money and all that. Um, but are you convinced that we can see this fight by the end of the calendar year, given what, what both men are saying? You'd like to hope so. I mean, I'll say this. I don't, I don't ever get too excited until I see a deal done. Uh, you know, as I've said uh, right. other interviews and other places, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I used to get all crazed about these type of things when the fight didn't happen and lose my mind. Now it, it has no impact on me. It's like, as I have said, like water off a duck's back, baby. Oh, come uh, on. No, I'm serious about that. <laughs> so I want to see the fight like we all do. Absolutely. Um, but I've been down this road too many times. It's like, I feel like in boxing, we as fans, as reporters, you start to get excited about a fight that people talk about that seems like it's going to happen. And it's like the old uh, Peanuts cartoon where Lucy pulls the football away from Charlie Brown over and over and he keeps falling for it and he goes back and maybe this time she'll leave the ball and I'll kick the field goal but no she pulls it away and so I, I could cite chapter and verse the fights that we've gotten excited about where promoters or, or the management or the fighters talked about it and it didn't happen now in this particular case and, and Mayweather Pacquiao by the way that was like the football for six years now ultimately it happened but it was a long six years a lot of uh, footballs away so in the sense in the, in the case of Errol Spence against Terrence Crawford I'm a little more hopeful than a lot of those other fights. And the reason is very simple, because when the two fighters so strongly, so vociferously say right after his last fight, he said, I want Crawford next. 
Crawford was on Twitter tweeting about it. That's next. No more sides of the street bullshit. We're, you know, that's the fight we have to have. Um, you like to think where there's a will, there's a way. Now, if, if the arrow goes into a negotiation with uh, Terrence Crawford, who is now no longer has, the, has even the, the possibility of claiming there's a problem in terms of sides of the street or promoters, he is a free agent, broadcast and promotional uh, after his contract with Top Rank ended. If Errol goes into that conversation thinking he's going to get 70% of the pie, there's just not going to be a fight. Why, you know, Crawford's too proud of a man to, to, to be able to, to, ha to handle giving up that much of the purse. Now, I think there is a way, a way to make that fight, no doubt about it. Uh, but everybody's going to have to be reasonable with the expectations. And we can see one of the classics of all time. And frankly, if it's as good as we think it will be, there'll be another day, payday there because there might be a rematch. It's going to be so intriguing and so interesting. Um, but I just, uh, I'm not going to get too too uh, excited about it. But if I had to say, I think, you know, I think there's a very good chance it will get done. Let me tell you one other thing about Errol Spence. He talked about how I'm scripting his career and it was all coming to this moment where Crawford was the last guy standing for him to face. He's wiped out all the top welterweights from the PBC stable, um, except for Thurman, which, you know, that's a different story. You know, Thurman never wanted to fight him anyway. But uh, here's the thing. Before he fought Danny Garcia, I did an interview with Errol Spence. And I very clearly recall, I could probably find it in my notes, him telling me that if he didn't fight Terrence Crawford, or that he wouldn't leave the welterweight division until he fought Terrence Crawford, because if he left before fighting Terrence Crawford, he would feel like the legacy of his accomplishments in the division were unfulfilled, that he had to fight Terrence Crawford before he would consider moving up to junior middleweight. Now is that time. He's, exactly. he's in his early 30s. The fight is right there. He's not in, there's no man, you know, there's no, there's no other reason that he can't do the fight. I don't think the WBA's mandate for him to fight Stan Yonis is going to hamper the fight. I think they'd be able to make a deal. I've talked to the Stan Yonis camp. They would be willing to listen to any kind of arrangement. I think that they all understand that it's a, that's a doable deal. So I just don't think there's an impediment to making the fight from that point of view. And it's a fight that both guys want. Yeah. You know, and, and what's the old saying, Lance? If the two fighters want to fight, they're going to find a way to fight. I agree. And, you know, look, I mean, there, just the sincerity in, in Errol Spence's voice, you know, post-fight, even the, the gif that he posted on uh, – uh, Instagram of knocking on Terrence Crawford's door. You know, I don't know if that put me over the top, but I'm a believer now. I do think that it's going to happen uh, this year, and it's going to be like we said. I mean, there's so many. Uh, well, if it know. doesn't, if it doesn't, I'll 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 give you a hug and console you because I I won't be surprised if it doesn't. I I hope it does, but I won't be surprised if it doesn't because I'm cynical like that. Well, I think the timing is perfect now. I mean, you and to to think that we can get. Uh, a undisputed champion in the glamour welterweight division. I mean, there's so much money on the table here. Uh, both guys will be completely taken care of for their life with this fight. And like you said, I mean, how can it? How can this fight disappoint? I mean, it's it's definitely going to lead to another chapter if uh, if either guy would want that. So, um, look, I thought it was a great development for the sport. Um, as you said, we're heading into uh, three consecutive weeks of of uh, breathtaking action with uh, Fury White. Um, Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez in, in Las Vegas, followed by Canelo Alvarez and Dimitri Bivol um, in the light heavyweight division. It's going to be a tremendous time for, for the sport. And uh, I'm glad that Errol Spence and, and Terrence Crawf Crawford are saying the things that they're saying. Dan, a lot to be excited about. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing you out in Vegas next week, buddy. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, you bet, Lance. Look forward to seeing you, my man. Let, uh, let the uh, viewers know again where they can follow your work, Dan. Oh, yeah. By all means. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, just go on. Uh on uh, Substack, uh, the newsletter platform. You, you just type in your browser, danrayfield.substack.com. It'll take you to my page. You can either read the page or you can sign up with your email or for an alert on your phone uh, to get all of my posts, all my newsletters, all my news, all my columns. Um, it's, uh, it's, I, I find people really, they, they like it because it comes, as I say, you don't have to go search for the news that comes to you. So that's one. I've also been doing some work with my good friend TJ Reeves over at bigfightweekend.com. Uh, with with all the daily news also, and uh, we're having a good time doing it. And I can't wait to be at the fights. Uh, you know, having been at a fight since Crawford Porter at the end of last year, I'm getting back out on the road to do uh, Shakur and Valdez and stay in Vegas for the week for Bivol, uh, that fight with Canelo, and I uh, can't wait. Great. Thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate you. You bet, man. Anytime.